Hi, today I want to talk about a wine region. This one is in Oregon. It's called Willamette Valley. And to uh, accent that, I have a little wine here from Willamette Valley. Now, this one is a Pinot. It's from a place I visited not too long ago. And uh, really, really good wines up there. So let's talk a little bit about Willamette after I sample this, of course. Mm. This is very good. All right, so enough enjoyment there for me. Let's get on to the subject here. Okay, Willamette Valley is in Oregon, which is in the northwest part of the United States. More specifically, it's a subsection or a smaller part of, of Oregon, and it is located predominant. well, all of it is south of Portland. I think it goes down as far as Eugene. And if you're looking straight south of Portland, that would probably be the eastern edge. So it goes from, uh, from Portland towards the Pacific Ocean. So from my viewpoint, that direction made sense. Anyway, so it's kind of, if you draw a line south of Portland, it's, that would be the eastern edge, and most of it would be west of that line, up to the Cascade Mountains. Uh, I believe it's Cascades. Anyway, so well, I'll throw a map up there so you can see where it's at more specifically. Like I said, I had the occasion to visit there. It was uh, June of 2018, and I went with a group of people from the store, and we had a really good time. We were there for four days and whatever nights, that, I guess three nights. So it was a relatively short trip, but we packed a lot into it. We visited a lot of wineries up there. So let's talk a little bit about Oregon wine, specifically, or Willamette wine. There's other parts of Oregon that make wine as well. So we're looking just at Willamette Valley. Uh, the predominant grape planted there is Pinot Noir, which is what this is. And uh, that makes up about two-thirds of their acreage of planted vineyards. The other third are kind of broken down. Uh, the closest one is Pinot Gris or Pinot Grigio, same grape, different name. And that makes up a... Uh, oh, probably a real small part of the balance of that. Um, then Chardonnay would be the next one. And then it's a whole mix of other very, very small plantings. And I'm talking by acreage here, or hectares, or however you care to term it. So definitely Pinot Noir is the number one, and that region is most well known for its Pinot Noir. Now, what has it got going there for it? Uh, the soil is great there. The climate is wonderful. Um, the, uh, you've got different types of soil. You've got valley as well as up on the hills and into the foothills of the mountains and things. There are a number of mountains. There's not a super high mountain range in through there, but there are some. And uh, let's see, the growing season, of course, summer months, and it, it was fairly cool when we were there. It's, not, it's a Pacific Northwest climate, which means they do get a lot of rain, although throughout a lot of the summer it's fairly dry. They get most of the rain in the wintertime. So getting towards uh, harvest time is where the rains start to pick up. So if they can get them in and harvested before then, they're, they got it made. So let's see, what else can we talk about there? The soil varying types, and it kind of depends on which part of the valley you've got. Everything from you know, volcanic to alluvial to whatever. I'm not a geologist. So I'm not really up on that part of it. So let's see. We also have... Um, I'm just going to talk about the region. It is a great place to visit, first of all. I mean, you've got some incredible vistas. Uh, there's you know, just scenery to die for. Uh, almost every winery we went to uh, for sampling and tasting, you go into their parking lot and you, it's just incredible. You look off in the distance, you've got mountains, you've got forest land, of course you've got vineyards. Um, just beautiful, beautiful countryside. I would say if you're going to go visit in person, uh, the best way in there, of course, is through Portland Airport if you're flying in. And uh, we stayed just to the west of Portland in a suburb, so pretty much every place we went was south of where we were staying. And that worked out very well. Uh, you get west of the city and then uh, stay there or further south of the city, too, if you want to go more into the valley itself to stay. I will warn you, though, if you're flying into and out of Portland Airport, the traffic in the city of Portland is just killer. Uh, we, uh, 
had a departure on Tuesday afternoon and it took us what I thought was a very, very long time to get from uh, the heart of Portland to the airport. And it, in terms of miles, it's not that far away. You can look on the map. So just keep that in mind. Uh, we did do some side trips also, which in retrospect, I wish we'd done um, our one side trip as the last thing before we had to catch the plane out, because that would have put us north of Portland. It would have been a much easier trip in. I went to a big waterfall there. The, um, Mammoth Falls, something like that. A uh, name escapes me at the moment. I'll put the name up there. Beautiful scenery. Again, it was right along the Columbia River. Columbia River, of course, is um, borders uh, makes up the border of part of Oregon, the border between Washington State and the, the um, state of Oregon. Columbia River, if you go further upstream into Washington State, there's a lot of great wine up there, and uh, I'll have to do a different video on that sometime. But uh, a lot of people associate Columbia Valley with specifically Washington State, but there are parts of Oregon vineyards uh, or AVAs that are in along the Columbia River as well. So let's see, what else can we talk about? Uh, the wine and the location, part of the terroir, of course, is its location. And being at the latitude it is, it's comparable to uh, being in, Bur in Burgundy, France. So. If you were, you know, follow the, the latitude straight across, you're going to put yourself in, the, I believe, the more northern parts of France. You've got some similarities going on there between latitude, which means you have a similar amount of sunlight. Burgundy, of course, is known for its red burgundy, which is 100% Pinot Noir. So you get some things like that. The rest of the climate is very different from Burgundy. It's a lot warmer there. It's uh, growing seasons approximately the same. The sunlight in theory is about the same. Uh, both have their cloudy days, their stormy days, whatever types of cloud covers. That does block some sunlight, so they're not too far off. Burgundy is a little bit further north, making it a little bit cooler, a little bit shorter growing season. But you can find some really, really good pinots in, um, in Willamette, and that I would say are comparable to some burgundies. So it depends on kind of the style you like. Uh, we were We had some from the very light bodied, this is not one of them, it's a little, a little fuller body. But from the very light body to an extremely full body, somebody never, I didn't realize you could get pinots that full body, and they were amazing, by the way. So it's uh, with that much of the region planted in pinot, you know there's got to be a lot of different styles of it. Some other interesting things we found were uh, a place that, in addition to making wine, they actually manufacture giant clay pots, amphora, sell them specifically for aging wine and fermenting and such. So instead of using barrels, using these uh, big clay pots. I think I've got some pictures I can throw in there. And a really interesting process that's gone through, and I really look forward to see the future of that enterprise. It's just kind of getting off its off the ground as I speak now. They have contacts but um, and requests for sales that exceed their production right now, so I think they've got a real winner there. I'm looking forward to see how that turns out in the future. Uh, just, uh, again, we had a wonderful time. The people up there were, were great, very friendly. I highly recommend a trip to Willamette Valley. Uh, you know, pick out some vineyards, your, whatever your favorites are. Expect to drink a lot of Pinot, but don't expect it all to be like Burgundy. So, I highly recommend going there, and Here's Burgundy. I, I want to say, first of all, if you do have questions about wine that you'd like to send me, or if you have suggestions for future videos, more than happy to take a look at those. Either way, questions or, or recommendations. Send them to me at this address, uh, windownqa at gmail.com. That's the best way to reach me. I see that a lot faster than I would see the comments. So if you've got ideas for wine, Put them in there, or if you just want to send me a note and say hi, that's good too. Okay, so uh, just in keeping with everybody else on YouTube these days, uh, I, if you would, like, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, share this video or any others that you find useful and helpful. And uh, definitely let me know what you think. Also, uh, hit the little bell icon so you get notified when new videos are coming out. So, with that in mind and all that said, cheers and... Good Pinot.